Welcome, everybody. My name is Mr. Reality, and I'm joined with psychic medium Liz Cross. Thanks for joining us. How are you, Liz? Great. I'm still wondering where the pedals are. Well, sometimes it's hard when you got to make things out of sticks, but I was looking on Reddit and trying to find some fun old photos and found this innovative cyclist from Estonia on a bicycle that either he or his dad made in 1912. And I wonder if we could bring in his energy over 110 years ago and find out, did it work? And what else did he build? Oh, wow. I have him here. Wow. He actually, he had a very uh, different life than, you know, you, he just looks like maybe like a simple farmer here. I'm not saying farmers are simple mentally, but you know what I mean. But as I'm looking into him, he actually ended up in the war. Ah, uh, did did he build this bike himself or did his dad make it for him or grandpa? No, he didn't build it. Who made it for you? It, he bought it. Wow. I want to buy a Flintstone bike. <laughs> it's really cool, isn't it? I like it so much. I mean, wow, that's really innovative and and just so great did it ever have pedals no so what did you use it for so he really used it more for pulling things ah. it was easier for him to move the bicycle and for the bicycle to pull things than it was for him to uh than to 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 pedal it it was more of a uh a thing to were you on the farm? Yeah, he was on the farm. I knew it. I knew it. He was on the farm. Yeah. Can he take us back to his life before he incarnated as this young boy and tell us about writing the script for his life? Did he know what would be coming? Did he plan to fight in it? And did he make a pact to live or to not live through that war? Or was that up in the air? Did you? He did live through the war, but the war severely damaged him. Um, and what what happened? He ended up having children. He ended up having how many daughters? Two daughters. Um, and he had grandchildren as well. What about making the contract? Well, so this is great. These questions are great because he's saying to me, like when you're up there, you know that there is a war on the timeline. How are you going to fit into it? And he actually went to battle. He chose that. What was the advantage from the other side in deciding to join the war? Like, does it level up your karma? Does it help you with evolution, ascension? What is the advantage of being in war? It's really to grow your soul. The amount of trauma, PTSD, you know, he saw um, explosions. He saw a lot of, you know, unsavory scenes. And you have to learn how to emotionally deal with those, he said. He shut down. The war caused him to shut down in his life. And he was never the same since. In fact, it sort of froze his brain. And as you cross over, is that taken into account in your life review? And are there people or entities or angels there to help you move through that process? Or do you just let it all go away? So when you cross over, he says, you do have to go into learning. How could I have dealt with this better? What was it that I needed in order to process and stop being so highly traumatized? Um, how could I stop the flashbacks? How could I stop 
the scenes where should I have reached out for help because he didn't reach out for help. I mean, that was just not something you did back then. Um, he says he, he couldn't talk about it to anyone. He had no relief. So he actually, uh, was drinking and that was where he found his answers. That's shocking to me that a 111 year old photo has resonance with things that we're going through in life today. Mm -hmm. But when he crossed over, what was his sense? What was his emotional path? It was relief. That life was particularly hard for him. Um, it was, it was difficult to process and it was relief. It was, it was as if, you know, I'm free because all of these earthbound problems were just hanging around him. It was so he heavy on him, he says. How can he suggest that he could have coped better with the problems that he had besides reaching out? What other avenues could he have taken to ascend his soul further while incarnated? Well, in hindsight, he says meditation would have been useful for him. Hypnotherapy would have been useful for him. That was available, he says at the time. But those sorts of subjects were very woo, right? So it wasn't something that was just, just there as, as mainstream, as normal. Um, but even just talking about it would have done him a lot of good. There was no one to talk to. Looking at the tapestry of his other incarnations, is it a recurring theme for him to experience these traumas and not have the, the coping mechanisms? Mm. He's been in wars before, many wars actually. Um, he's not doing any more war lifetimes. He says, I I'm, I'm finished with that. Um, what would have been the coping mechanisms for future? He's actually his next lifetime. He's going to, are you going to be male or female? Oh, he said both. And I'm like, both. He says, yes. So what will you be born as? He'll be born male, but transition into female. And so he'll experience both genders. Um, he will have a family. Uh, and will it be in Estonia? No, I feel like he's going to go to France. Uh, he's going to be in Europe, uh, uh, but Fran more French uh, area where it's more accepted. Um, he is going to... You know, so now he's going to have a whole new set of problems, not saying that this is problematic, but saying that you have to figure out who you are, where you fit into this world, you know, how are you going to, you know, fit into what, you know, what you believe and who you want to be and who you identify with. So that that has a lot of psychological challenges. How many more lifetimes does he have to go through in the future before he can ascend? Hundreds. And how many has he been through before this incarnation in Estonia as a human? Thousands. So about 1,100. <laughs> For those of you who keep track, <laughs> right. maybe no, 1,500. But he's, he's had thousands of lifetimes, but... As a human, how many lifetimes have you had as a human? Probably 7,000 lifetimes as a human. That is a lot of resets and a lot of trauma to go through. But are there any coping mechanisms on the other side to help heal the soul and to make it evolve and to heal the wounds that we experience down here? They give you guidance about maybe this particular thing did not work for you. So maybe try this. Um, you also can 
request to make contact with light workers. So, and I understand that because I always say everybody who comes to the CTT has contracted on a soul level to be there. So that I get this, I get what he's saying. Are you going to use light workers in the future? Yes, he is. Now, somebody actually asked me the other day, we can factory reset our phone. Can we not just factory reset our soul? <laughs> right? Where's the button for that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. That. right. And and the answer was no. And even if you did have a button where you could refactory reset your soul, would you really want your first human lifetimes to come into this era? I, I don't think so. <laughs> you won't be able to have the skill bag to come into this one with no other incarnations. That's true. Mm. Little boy on a cyclist that's made of wood. Thank you so much for joining us. And Liz Cross, thanks for giving him a voice. Yeah. He says, thank you for having uh, him today. Wow. He's very nice. He's very nice, but he did die of alcoholism. So uh, are you going to be an alcoholic in your future lifetime? He says, no way. I never want to do that again. All right. Well, thank you very much. This was great. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.